What is up YouTube? It's your boy God King Futz here to show you exactly what the tryhards of GTA Online do not want you to know. This is going to be the ultimate PvP tips and tricks series and in episode 1 we're going to be going over all the general tips you'll need to know to go forward with the series. There will be a lot of tips for beginning players and a ton of tips even advanced players won't know about. So subscribe to the channel, drop a like and stay tuned because I am going to be dropping some bombs over the next couple of weeks you're definitely going to want to check out. So, without further ado guys, let's get right into it. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. So if you're watching this video, I know you've been there because we've all been there taken out by some random tryhard who probably isn't even that good at the game, but ended up killing you and destroying your cargo by abusing some broken mechanic in GTA Online. But don't worry guys, because your boy God King Futz is here to show you how to bring the fight back to the tryhards. Despite popular belief, there is no God tier tactic that can't be countered and no player that can't be beaten. Grand Theft Auto is a glorified game of rock, paper, scissors, and with this series, you're going to learn how to always keep the fight on your terms, and always be ready with the rock to your opponent's metaphorical scissors. Episode 1 will be on general PvP tips that'll bring you up to speed with the most useful tactics popular amongst GTA Online tryhards, leveling the playing field, and making you ready for the more advanced tips in future episodes. So boring stuff up first, guys, but stay tuned, because like I said, I'm going to be dropping some bombs. Let's get into it. So I know that settings isn't going to be the most glamorous part of the video, but trust me guys, you're going to want to pay attention. Not tweaking these settings is going to put you at a disadvantage in PvP scenarios, and we all know that's why we're here. So the first setting that we're going to look at is third person aim slash look acceleration. Now I know the name is as clear as mud, but head over to the settings tab and head down to controls and turn this one down. What that's going to do for you is when you're zoomed in with your sniper scope, your fine motor movements are going to be a lot easier to pull off, making headshots an absolute breeze in comparison if this thing is turned up. The next setting that we're going to be looking at is first person on foot field of view does exactly what it sounds like. Turn this thing all the way up to gain a little more screen real estate. Next, we'll be looking at first person auto level camera, which just levels your camera and brings it to the center of the screen as you move around with your character in first person. So turn this setting off if you want to have a little more control over where you're looking while you're moving in first person with your character. This isn't a game changing setting, but it will help in certain situations. Next, you're going to want to turn your first person ragdoll settings off. Okay, keeping these settings turned on is a little bit too immersive in first person to be competitive. So keeping this setting off will make it much easier to stay oriented during a fight when you inevitably get ragdolled, making it a lot easier to take aim at your opponent and not letting them get the jump on you. Next, you'll want to turn off your first person combat role. So a lot like the ragdoll setting, this one's going to keep you oriented in the middle of a fight should you decide to do a combat role. Now, I know I'm holding a sniper rifle, but guys, quick side note, for the love of God, do not roll during a sniper battle. The opponent is too far away to lock onto you, and all you're doing is unzooming your scope, sort of defeating the purpose of keeping yourself oriented. So just don't roll. There is no point. But turn this setting off if you want to keep yourself oriented when in a gunfight with somebody who can lock on. Next up, we have first person head bobbing. Now, this one doesn't have a huge impact on gameplay, but more astute players will notice the way that the camera bobs from side to side as you walk. But honestly, take my word for it, you don't need to be able to see it. Just turn the setting off and it can only help your gameplay out. Next up, you're going to want to turn on your first person, third person cover. Now, I know it seems like they name these things to be as confusing as possible, but that's why your boy God King Futz is here. Turn this one on to give yourself an advantage when you're in first person and you'd like to look around a corner or see past some cover. You just can't do it in first person, so turn this setting on. Next, head to settings, go to camera, and turn your first person vehicle hood on. This is going to make flying a lot easier and make you a lot more competitive in the jet, but more on that in a later video. Next, in the display section of the settings, you're going to want to turn off your in-game depth of field effects. Now, in single player, this might be sort of an immersive setting, like most of the settings here, but you're going to want to turn it off to make yourself more competitive. As you can tell, it's going to blur out the backgrounds of different things that you're looking at, helping some things stay in focus and other things blurred out. But, like I said, in PvP, you're going to want to be able to see as much as you can at all times. So go ahead and turn this setting off to make sniping at a distance much, much easier. As you can see now, the palm trees, the buildings, the road, everything is in focus, not just whatever it is that I'm staring at. 
All right, gang. So now that we have the boring setting options over with, we can move into more gameplay oriented tips. First up, make sure that you always snipe in first person. I am absolutely astounded at how many advanced players still don't know that they need to be doing this. When you're aimed down your scope, you're in first person anyway, but if your camera is specifically set to first person, your mobility while aiming increases dramatically. Not only do you move faster, but you can turn directions on a dime. I'll be going over this in way more detail in a future video on sniping, but for now, take my word for it, try it out yourself. Next up, we have outfits. Now I know most players are not going to take this tip seriously, but please just wear something black. If you don't believe me, take a look on screen right now. Oddly enough, the counter to wearing something black in shadows is going to be your thermal goggles, which brings me on to my next tip. So head down to the mask store and pick yourself up some thermal goggles. These are obviously invaluable, but more on that in a future episode. For now, just focus on the fact that these quad lens goggles are actually bulletproof helmets, giving you an extra little bit of protection if you have them on. Next up is a tip that I see most advanced players completely ignoring and it always bites them in the butt. Super simple, number your outfits. You have the ability to rename them, so drop a number in front of them so you always know which one has your bulletproof helmet or your thermal goggles or whatnot. Which actually brings me up to my next tip, guys. Have a scuba suit. This is going to be invaluable in PvP scenarios where you need to make a quick getaway. It's very hard to shoot a player that's underneath the water, not only because you can't see them, but because the bullets don't travel very well. So always have that scuba suit ready. Next, you're going to always want to make sure that you're stocked up on ammo, armor, and snacks. You can buy ammo from the interaction menu, you can buy armor from the gun store, and if you head out to your assistant, you can actually get snacks for free. But if you don't have a CEO office, you can always head down to the convenience store and buy them the normal way. And once you're all stocked up on snacks, you're going to want to learn how to eat them properly, which leads me into my next tip. If you've ever gone into your interaction menu to go and eat yourself some snacks in the middle of a gunfight, you're going to notice your character goes through this lengthy snack eating animation. And in a PvP scenario, we can't be having that. But thankfully, there are a couple of ways that you can get around this. Number one is taking out your gun and aiming down sights. This is going to allow you to skip the snack eating animation. The next thing that you can do is hop into cover, which works the exact same way. And last but certainly not least, this is actually my recommended way of skipping the snack eating animation is to just simply throw on a mask. Obviously, you can't go through the animation and the game's not going to bar you from eating snacks. So boom, there you go. Next, you'll want to get yourself a gun locker to unlock the ability to choose which weapons show up in your weapon wheel and which ones don't. Nobody likes scrolling through an arsenal of useless weapons in the middle of a PvP scenario. So here are the weapons that I use and why. Use the Mark II pistol to skip the poison animation during an easy way out. Use the ceramic pistol with a silencer for PvE stealth based missions. Use the heavy revolver mostly for this right here, but it also makes a handy one shot kill when combined with BST. Use the AP pistol when inside vehicles to laser headshots on other players and NPCs. This works especially well if you're in the passenger seat because it actually does give you auto aim and the damage output on the AP pistol is just ridiculous. The flare gun is mostly for fun and can be really handy in signaling other players, but where it shines the most is actually deflecting homing missiles. Now, this is something I'll be going over in more detail in a future video, so stay tuned, like, and subscribe, guys. But for now, just know that this is a very advanced high IQ move only for pro players. Use the up and atomizer to dislodge sail vehicles when they get stuck and for embarrassing the hell out of tryhards by knocking them off of their oppressors. Use the Unholy Hellbringer or the Light Machine Gun when you need a lot of stopping power to be thrown downrange. The Special Carbine is my favorite PvP weapon. Use it to laser those headshots at medium to long range. Use the regular sniper with a silencer for PvE scenarios, but use the heavy sniper with explosive ammos for collateral kills and taking out vehicles. The Marksman Rifle is good for putting pressure on players that are too far to lock on but too close to be sniped. Use your melee weapons in PvP scenarios where, um, uh, where, uh, okay, well, let's be real. You don't actually use melee weapons during PvP scenarios, but it works really well in PvE scenarios, and this is a tip that I see most players not taking advantage of. It actually gives you the ability of Trevor from single player, which makes you essentially invincible for a short time. Use the pump action shotgun with explosive rounds. I call it the boomstick for really pissing off tryhards with insta-kills at close range. Use the assault shotgun when you really want to kill a player but don't feel like thinking or aiming. Like I'm serious, this thing just deals a ton of damage at close range and with the auto aim, it's just an absolute force. It's also really good since it's a spread shot at getting bullets in between the armor plates of cars. So use it against things like Karumas to get some easy headshots. 
Use the grenade launcher for when your enemies are not social distancing and hanging out in some sort of an alleyway where you can't get a good angle. The RPG has fantastic explosive splash damage, so use it for when your opponents are abusing cover and you can't get a good shot. Use the minigun to disable vehicles that you can't get a good explosive shot off on, or for mowing down enemies in free aim lobbies. Use the firework launcher for, um, well this. Use the homing launcher as an alternative to the RPG or for locking onto vehicles. This works really great with helicopters and cars, but not so good with more agile vehicles like the laser or the hydra. So last but certainly not least, flex your gamer IQ by leading these tryhards into traps with the sticky bombs and the proximity mines. Now, this is like I said a very high IQ move, but as a player that is getting attacked by a tryhard, you have one distinct advantage. You always know what the tryhard's next move is. They're going to be chasing you, they're going to try to kill you. I'll be releasing a video later on in the series completely dedicated to baiting tryhards. This is one of my most favorite pastimes, and believe me guys, just like Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner, well, that might be a dated reference for some of you guys, but at the end of the day, the point is that they are going to chase you again, and again, and again. Use this to your advantage to clean up kills and really piss off some tryhards. So if you've made it this far into the video, congratulations, because we're now moving on to the more advanced tips that are really going to separate the noobs from the sweats. And what every sweat really needs to master is the combat role. Performing a combat role will break the lock on of any player who's currently aiming at you. So if I had to boil it down to just one rule, it would be don't roll first. It's actually pretty straightforward when you think about it. When you roll first, it gives your opponent the opportunity to perform their role at the same time as you're inside yours. Meaning that when you're finally able to lock onto your enemy, they're going to be in mid-roll and already locked onto you on their way to bringing their weapon up to get that easy headshot. I'll be releasing an entire video in the series dedicated to run and gun tips and tricks, but for now, just practice baiting your opponents into that roll to get that easy insta-kill headshot. So the next pro tip that will put you in a league with the sweaties is getting used to BST. Now, it's not necessarily something you'll need in every single fight, but once in a while you'll run into that tryhard that just needs that extra bit of damage to take down. Maybe he's using a little BST himself, or maybe he's just a little quicker on the draw. But in a gunfight, a player with BST will win 9 times out of 10. Here we see it takes 10 shots to the body to kill a player with the 11th shot, and with BST the same player takes only 5 shots to die. You also get a significant health boost, making BST one of the more powerful items in the game. The next important rule is to always be looking to fight from the high ground. When you're looking at your opponent from high ground, you can see their entire body, whereas they can only see the top half of you. This makes your enemies easier to shoot and you harder to shoot. Pretty straightforward if you ask me, straight out of Sun Tzu's Art of War. Even if your opponent gets the drop on you, you're gonna have the advantage. But be careful because playing against strong players, most of you guys already know, approaching a ledge will get you rocketed into the wasted screen in no time flat. Which brings me into my next pro tip, the fast reload. To do this, just switch from whatever gun you're using to your sticky bombs, then switch back to the gun that you wanted and it will be reloaded. You'll have to open your weapon wheel twice in order to do this correctly, once to bring up the sticky bombs and again to bring up the old weapon. This actually works better in first person as you're able to skip the animation of bringing your gun up. The next pro tip is deciding based on your playstyle whether or not you want to use incendiary rounds on your heavy sniper rifle. One shot to the chest with a heavy sniper rifle with explosive rounds will not get the kill if the player is above level 120, but one shot to the chest with the flaming rounds will. Explosive rounds will do more damage to vehicles, but incendiary rounds are cheaper with a higher mag size and more ammo capacity, so make this decision based on your own playstyle. Next, we're going to have to talk about your radar. Every strong player relies heavily on the minimap to get a sense of what's going on on the battlefield, and that's why going off the radar can prove such an invaluable tool for PvP. Being off the radar gets you the jump on your opponents, and regardless of what level they are, your chances of getting the kill goes up dramatically. If you take your time and aim your gun, you can usually get the kill right off the jump, but worst case scenario, you'll force your opponent into a roll, then simply counter roll like I showed you earlier in the video and the kill is yours. Most players will get super flustered when being attacked and they don't know where from, buying you even more time to get the kill. If you're quick, you can usually take down an entire team in one quick swoop. So if you're one of those players that doesn't use their minimap because they think that they're too good or just doesn't see the importance in it, here's an example of what happens when a player doesn't use their minimap. Now, I can't blame the first player because they clearly seem to be a little bit new, but this player right here seems like they might have some strength in the game. However, they're not paying attention to their minimap. 
Now, without even being off the radar in a 2v1, I'm actually taking over this stand here ground relatively easily. Now, again, I can't really blame the newer player, but the other player does launch a rocket in my direction. However, he wasn't looking at the radar. If he was paying attention to his radar, he would have seen that I was standing right on the perimeter of his stand your ground, and a stronger player would have bounced a rocket right off the side of those sandbags, and that would have been the end of me. However, this player chokes, and I end up taking over his stand your ground. Even here, I'm able to take cover behind this pillar relatively easily, knowing this player isn't strong enough to hit me with an explosive. Understanding these things is called player IQ, and I'll be dedicating a video in the future exclusively to this concept. Using tactics that take you off radar in a pinch are good examples of high IQ moves, like the RC Tank or the RC Bandito. A great example of a high IQ player is Gilly Master. You should check him out on YouTube. Me and him play from time to time, and I can tell you not only does Gilly have a strong idea of the fundamentals of GTA, he also has a dangerously high player IQ, which makes him an absolute force in GTA Online PvP. So now that you have the fundamentals of PvP and Grand Theft Auto Online, let's go over some tools that you can add to your utility belt to really piss off some tryhards. I'll be going over all of these things in much more detail in future videos, but for now, get your hands on a Night Shark. As you can tell, I am taking a ton of punishment in this Night Shark from my buddy in a Mark II Oppressor. Now, if you didn't know, the normal Night Shark, no glitches, no god modes, nothing like that, actually takes 26 missiles to blow up from the Mark II Oppressor. Making the Night Shark one of the most useful tools for moving from A to B safely in the middle of a hectic lobby. The thruster is another vehicle that can take a ton of damage. Well, actually, the jetpack can't take too much punishment, but the jets on the side of the thruster seem to prematurely destroy rockets before they come into contact with the actual jetpack, rendering them essentially useless when the jetpack is flying away. Now, if you've spent any time in Grand Theft Auto Online in public lobbies, you've definitely been killed by the beeping homing missiles on a Mark II Oppressor. Now, these rockets have a crazy amount of range and mobility, allowing them to turn corners quickly and ensure contact with agile vehicles. I'm not going to be talking much about the Oppressor in this video. Instead, I'll be making a video dedicated to the Oppressor at a later date. Just know that this is something you're going to want to add to your arsenal as soon as possible. This means picking up a terabyte so you can reload on special ammunition and rockets on the fly. So if you're a newer player and can't afford too too much, you might want to consider picking yourself up a buzzard. If you're in a CEO, you can actually spawn the buzzard right beside you the same way you would any personal vehicle. So if you're in a safe place, this is a really handy trick to get around the map. It also holds four people so you can bring the whole team with you. Just make sure that you're in a safe place when you call in the buzzard because it does only take one rocket to destroy. A high IQ move is to call Lester to go off the radar for one minute just before you hop in the buzzard, allowing you a safe getaway. Keep in mind that these are beginner tips meant to bring you up to speed for future videos. And before long, you're going to be spanking tryhards in groups of three just like this. Leveled in the thousands, it does not matter. Now, I was hanging out in a public lobby as I do, recording some clips for this video actually, when I came across some tryhards griefing people's sales missions. Now, as you can see, they've clearly driven out most of the lobby already, but not me. They must have gotten bored from killing defenseless low-level players because they started a piracy prevention but forgot one important thing. Ya boy God King Futz was still in the lobby. And what kind of tryhard spanking guide would this be if I didn't spank myself a couple of tryhards now and again? So I pull up on the piracy prevention with 30 seconds left, just as the team thinks they've got it in the bag and start heading back to shore. Then if you notice high IQ move here, the lead tryhard commits suicide and all of his boys follow because he knows he's going to spawn back on the yacht. So a couple of combat rolls and a couple of boomstick shots later and I made these tryhards my bitch. So watch this video guys, rewind it and watch it again, pause it at the points that you need and I want to turn you, the normie player, into a force in GTA Online. Just don't forget guys that I do these videos for you, so drop a like if you liked what I did today and consider subscribing if I showed you something new because I'm going to be dropping some bombs over the next couple of weeks, you're definitely going to want to stay tuned. And with that being said, guys, that pretty much wraps things up. But one more thing before you go, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm starting a crew in GTA Online. I know that I'm a little bit behind the wave here, but the name of that crew is Nucking Futs Co. It's an open crew, so anyone can join, and the crew is still fresh. So if you're interested in a promotion, I am handing them out like candy. So let me know by dropping your Rockstar Social Club handle in the comment section below, and I can promote you to representative. The only stipulation being you have to have Futs as your active crew.
And once again, guys, with that being said, that wraps everything up. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. And don't forget that I do this for you. So drop a like if you liked what I did today. And feel free to subscribe for more content in the future. And don't forget to stay classy, YouTube. And one final thing, guys, I know it's a long video already, but I have to give a quick shout out to all the people who helped me out with these videos. There are way too many of you guys to name, so I'm going to start a list in the comments section and pin it up. You guys are amazing. I appreciate you.